Here's a problem on McLaren polynomials. We'll note three solutions and work out two of them. So, first, we want to find the partial fraction expansion of f of x equal to minus x squared plus 13 over x plus 2 times x minus 1 squared. Once we have that, I want to find the second degree Maclaurin polynomial for f of x. So that'll be the quadratic that best fits f of x at x equal to 0. Now, the first part, just a straightforward partial fraction expansion. So we know we look in the denominator, we have x plus 2, x minus 1 squared. So I have to assign terms to each factor. So we'll have a term for x plus 2, a term for x minus 1 squared. Because I have a linear factor with an exponent, we also have to assign terms for each lower power. So I'll also have a term for x minus 1. Now, clear out the denominators, we get this equality here. And then we just want to choose x to target certain factors. So if we choose x equal to 1, okay, we get a 12. This term goes away, this term goes away, and I'm left with 12 equals 3b, or b is 4. If I let x be equal to minus 2, we get a is equal to 1. And then we've run out of factors to target. So I can either take the derivative, target 1 again, or we could just choose any point. And since we already have a and b, we should get c without a problem. So just let x be equal to 0 and see what comes out. Now, when we solve, I'll get c is equal to minus 2. So my partial fraction expansion is going to be f of x equals 1 over x plus 2 plus 4 over x minus 1 squared minus 2 over x minus 1. One way to check, we could just recombine all our terms. Then we want to make sure the numerator comes out to minus x squared plus 13. Or I could just check a few points to make sure what comes out of here is equal to what we started with. So for instance, if I let x be equal to 0, in our original rational function, we'll have 13 over 2. If I put 0 into each of these terms, we wind up with a half plus 4 plus 2. And those two items are equal, so that checks. We could also try x equal to minus 1. Here, when we work it out, we'll get a 3. Then if I put minus 1 into each of these terms, we just wind up getting 1 plus 1 plus 1. So that checks out. And having checked two points, I'm more or less convinced that we're good. Now, I want to find the Maclaurin polynomial degree 2 for f of x. The recipe that we'll use, p sub 2 at x is equal to a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared. Where a sub 0 is equal to f evaluated at 0. a sub 1 is equal to first derivative of f evaluated at 0. a2 is equal to the second derivative of f evaluated at 0 divided by 2 factorial. Okay, which is just 2. Now, first method we could try, we just apply the quotient rule twice to f of x as is. That's going to be a bad direction to go in, because you can see this is going to involve a lot of work. So, we're not going to do it that way. Instead, using part 1 with our partial fraction expansion, we'll note we've written f in terms of a bunch of items that are easy to take the derivative of. So, if we apply our recipe for f of 0, we get 13 over 2. Okay, we've already seen that on the previous board. If I take the first derivative, well, we're just going to apply the chain rule to each of these terms. So, we bring it down to minus 1, take 1 off, derivative of the inside is 1, and so on for our other terms. If we evaluate at 0, we get minus a quarter plus 8 plus 2. So it's 40 over 4 minus a quarter gives me 39 over 4. For the second derivative of x, same idea. We're going to apply chain rule to these three terms. When we do that, we get this expression here. 
we put in our zero. What comes out is going to be okay, a quarter plus 24 plus 4, which when we put it over 4 gives us 113 over 4. So following our recipe, we'll have 13 over 2 plus 39 over 4x. Then here we're going to have to divide by 2, so I'll have 113 over 8x squared. For our third method, we'll use geometric series. So recall, if I have 1 plus box plus box squared, and so on, that'll converge if the absolute value of box is strictly less than 1. Then it's equal to 1 over 1 minus box. So we're going to apply this formula to each term in our partial fraction expansion. Now it'll be valid because we're going to use x very close to 0. Now, for our first term, we have 1 over x plus 2. I'm going to factor a 2 out of the denominator, which will give me a 1 over 1 plus x over 2. So in this case, our box is going to be equal to minus x over 2. Okay, we want a minus sign after this 1. So we'll have 1 minus x over 2 plus x squared over 4. Then I'm not interested in cubic or higher terms, so we can just stop there. Multiply through by 1 half. We'll call this item 1. We go to the third term in our partial fraction expansion. So I'll have minus 2 over x minus 1. I'm going to reverse the order in the denominator. So I'll get rid of the minus sign, leaving me with 2 over 1 minus x. Now here, I could just let box be equal to x. So we'll have 1 plus x plus x squared, and so on. And we multiply by 2. So the part we're interested in is going to be 2 plus 2x plus 2x squared. And call that item 2. For our last part, we need to do a little bit more work than in the first two. So I'll have 4 over x minus 1 squared. And since we're squaring, I can reverse the order. So we're going to take our 1 over 1 minus x and square it. So to multiply this by itself is going to be the same as just multiplying out two integers. So we're going to start with the 1, I multiply it by our top term, take the x, multiply it by our top term, take the x squared, multiply it by our top term, then we note I don't need any of the higher terms because they're going to be x cubed. So if I multiply anything by an x cubed, I'm going to get cubed or higher, so we can just drop it. So we'll only need these six terms here. We add them up, we get 1 plus 2x plus 3x squared, multiply by 4, and that gives me item 3. If we add items 1, 2, and 3, we see that we get what we got before for p sub 2 of x. So that's a check for our work and a second method.